Good evening and welcome to the stream this evening and super speedy good evening welcome I trust you are well tonight I am going to be doing some more hair there's lots of it to do um, so I'd better get started it's a bit of a late start I'm afraid having some food and one or two other bits and pieces but I'm here now finally eventually <laughs> And I've got a real got a real feeling I've forgotten something. Um, I've changed my glasses. I've got the pyrography tool. It's in front of me. I've got my reference pictures. I've started the music. The mic's working. I don't know what I've forgotten. <laughs> I'll get on with it. So hair, lots and lots of hair, and yeah. And now I'm trying to get my reference pictures to stay on the desk. They're off to one side of me. You can't uh, you can't see them from where you are, but they don't want to stay. I'm using two. One that's black and white, or rather monochrome, not black and white, because it's grayscale. Uh, and one that's colour. got lots of reviews to write 20 20k 20k characters oh it's 20 pages hmm. that's quite a large review but you are welcome to uh, to chill out well, hopefully the music will assist <laughs> um i don't know maybe i have to play pan pipes or something uh to really uh uh, chill things out a bit right so yeah dark dark around this edge lightening up mm, yeah Fluffy Twiggler, good evening and welcome. I haven't seen you. I was about to say I haven't seen you around for a while, but I saw you this evening. Not so long ago, relatively speaking. Well certainly within the last four hours. I couldn't actually see what you were drawing, but <laughs> So I am um, uh, having a go, uh, just <laughs> some different techniques for hair. Uh, any hair writing, um, pyrography, there's all sorts of different ways of doing it. And I have never yet settled on one that I like above every other. And uh, getting it right is um, it's something I want to do. I want to find a good way of doing it. but. Um, I haven't found one yet. Uh, sorry about that, super speedy. Everything seems to be going okay. I'm dropping. I am dropping a few frames. Oh, I did drop a few frames, but um, it seems to be happy again now. I did indeed lurk. Uh, I was probably doing something else. I didn't lurk for very long to be honest. I think I was trying to make tea or something or I don't remember what I was trying to do. 
It's that bad. I can't actually remember what I was doing less than four hours ago. Um, yeah, I saw you um, using a photograph on your um, phone. That's the word I was looking for, phone. I was trying to say camera, but meant phone. Um, but I was sort of doing that, trying to work out quite what it was. Um, but the, I mean, the stream was okay. Um, you know, it's you could see what you were you could see what you were doing. I just couldn't see what it was that you would. Yeah, you know what I mean. I couldn't see what it was. Well, uh, there is something uh, about lag, uh, uh, lag spikes, um, or even long-term lag super speed. It's really chilling. <laughs> if nothing's going on, it's a real chill out. Um, uh, and I'm talking and not doing things anymore, so I should get on with things. I did that last night. Who was it on? Claire was around, and uh, for some reason she asked me a question, and I couldn't stop talking after that. And it's a bit like that at the moment. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. This hairstyle has got hair going all sorts of directions all over the place. Plus it's a relatively low resolution image that I'm using and that doesn't make it any easier because it makes the hair look fuzzy. I don't want to be doing. What I don't want to be doing here is drawing every individual hair. Um, that would take absolutely hours. All will become clear when you add colour. Uh, okay. Wouldn't that make it a pig? Sorry. <laughs> A support character and not a main character. Uh, okay. They're important. All characters are important. So I've got a little, yeah, a little dark area here that leads from up there. Okay. I th yeah. Okay. Talk to myself a lot sometimes, even when I'm when I'm working with a talking to shorthand. Probably mentioned this before. You hear me? Yeah. And 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 just over and that sort of thing I do. In my. <coughs> In my own mind, I'm talking in full sentences. I just don't actually get it to come out of my mouth that way. <laughs> Sorry, but just just as I read it, Fluffy Twiggler, that it just it just struck me. <laughs> words, <laughs> words like that sometimes just. Uh, um, just pop out and uh, you know hit me over the head. Mm 
<laughs> that's that's the problem though. They 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 they're obvious afterwards, not before. <laughs> I guess what I should do is turn this around and, um, and work a little bit at an odd angle. Whilst I can work um, out on the reverse side of a circle, the way I want to hold the pen makes it easier to turn this um, this way around. And. Uh, I kind of want to work with what would be effectively quite fat brush strokes um, and do it well. I'm, I'm sort of trying to replicate what I'd do with an airbrush and use transparent paints. Mm. Clearly. <laughs> um, which would then overlay uh, each other as they're, uh, they're put down and sort of give you dark and light. Um, Darker and lighter strokes, uh, but when when you're doing pyrography, it it doesn't quite work that way. They blend uh, together, and you you get instead of you know, a, you know two strokes that overlap each other with a, a darker element in the middle, it kind of doesn't work that way. It just you get two strokes side by side that are the same, full across. So you actually have to then go over again to get that crossover which is kind of not what was um, intended to be done so whereas uh, with airbrushing you would sort of take sort of quite large strands here I kind of have to lay a colour down and then put little dark lines in which is kind of as you're looking sort of at the hair it's sort of the spaces and gaps in between um, but it is uh, so one thing I've got to do is is to have an under colour on this uh, even though it's quite light I need some sort of under colour otherwise the light will look too light. So I'll just put something down there like that. I'm just at, well, I've, I've now been doing sort of several lots of hours on this, of course, but I'm only just now starting to get back into practice. Um, with with the pens, it's um, I've been working really uh, with, with really cool temperatures. I just couldn't um, couldn't get things. What would that be the word? I don't quite know what the word would be, but I just couldn't quite get into the groove of being able to do it. Um, I'm starting to do that now. Well, tonight I can sort of feel a little bit more sort of confidence about using the pen that I didn't have previously. It's um, essentially out of practice, I guess would be the better way of describing it. And. Uh, it's whilst you know whilst there's an element of it's like riding a bike as they say once uh, you know how to it just takes a little bit of practice to get back into it and you know this is somewhat the same it was sort of several hours worth of practice but there is uh, mm, or was certainly a, a sort of a I won't say a scared that's wrong 
um, an aversion to um, to working with a hot pen uh, just because you know having spent several hours having done all this of it you don't want to create a dirty great big black blob in the middle that you can't get rid of but after 10 staring staring at it at the eyes you get freaked out okay not quite sure should I follow what you're saying there uh, super speedy Certainly, um, staring at uh, something I'm working on for lots of hours does um, make it more difficult to see what I'm actually looking at. It does, you do become blind to what you're looking at. Uh, Too bad. Um, yeah, and the light. One thing when you're trying to do certain things, like, and I just noticed that that's precisely what I've done. You're filling this in, I'm going from the same start to end position, which almost by definition creates the look of a line, which I didn't want, and that was what I was just filling in some gaps there. How did I do the background? Um, slowly. Actually, I didn't use this particular pen, I used this one because it's larger. Turn the heat up and move really slowly, or relatively slowly. Um, I can turn this up quite a bit, um, but really just, yeah, turn it up. I'm still not sure quite whether I did it the right way around or not. One of the things that's kind of difficult when you do hair is, of course, hair goes over the background. And it becomes a, do you do the hair first or do you do the background first? And uh, what I probably will do is take a scalpel and add some light, you know, scrape some of the dark away to create um, some thing that goes over the background. Otherwise it looks a bit like a stencil. It, it sort of does at the moment if you're looking at it. It's kind of like a cut out a stencil. So I need to... Um, you know, just go over the edges a little bit. Well, I sort of can't. They need to be lighter than the background, so I'll do it with a scalpel. <laughs> okay, super. So. I could do hair, it's sort of like this, you know, just as this is, which is just a solid block of colour. Uh, which is something I probably have to experiment with, you know, it's um, it's a different style of doing of doing it. So, you know, instead of uh, I don't mean this in a draw gutty way, but sort of cartoon style, solid blocks of colour. Um, I kind of like the texture more though so I mean this looks a little bit silly I mean but hopefully it'll look less silly but um, uh, there's texture in it as opposed to just blocks of colour and I think it looks better Nakmui good evening uh, hello mister <laughs> good evening welcome to the studio this evening So now, some of the trick, or oh, some of the, mm, 
what I'm going to do now is sort of uh, do um, lighter areas of hair as well, which is an interesting challenge. Um, let's work with this a little bit upside down. Uh, it's a commission, uh, Nashmilly. Uh, so I'm just... Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here with her. It's kind of just all... Well, there's a hairstyle to it, but it's kind of all over the place. Um... I'm not sure quite how far to simplify it. Um, I mean, one of the nice things about hair, in a way, is you know, you, I got sort of like a slight blob there, which I wasn't really wanting to have, but it really doesn't matter. Hair isn't the same colour end to end, and you get reflections and overlays and all sorts of things. So, you know, you. Some of the things that would be a problem elsewhere, like little blobs or darkened areas, really aren't a problem when you um, are working with hair. Just because of that, and you know, you can play about with it a lot more and uh, work around that sort of thing happening. So what I'm just trying to do here is just apply some form of colour. The white's too bright, makes it a bit harder to see. Her brown coat captain, hello and welcome. You finished, well, I don't know if you came back later last night. I was waiting, I don't know if the portrait you were doing contained hair. Uh, or whether it was a hood. Well, it wasn't, I couldn't quite tell from the, uh, from the drawing. I was kind of waiting to see if you were going to do hair and just how you were going to do it. Hair's the thing that I have a problem with. <laughs> so... I was, I was, uh, I was going to look and see if I could pick up some things from from what you were doing. Um, I was just saying as well. I'm starting to get a little bit more confident. I've not been doing paragraphy for a while, and uh, I've been working with a really cool pen to do most of this. Um, but I'm, I am just starting now to get sort of confidence back at working with a. Um, with a higher heat on this pen and uh, uh, and just sort of go from you know go from there so to speak but uh, I know that now that I'm doing the hair it's it's I've got less of a um, an issue if I create um, some overly dark areas Hello, Pussycat. That's a Felix. Okay. So we're probably not going to get a visit because Felix doesn't tend to visit. Hmm. Well, this is actually on birch plywood. Um, basswood is actually relatively pricey here in the UK. Even though it's um, European lime is its other name. Uh, which, um, other, you know, other wood like birch is actually a lot cheaper, even even in uh, in in slabs, but. Uh, Yeah, 
it does have the advantage though does uh, birch plywood of you know, being thin it makes it easier to post Aspen mm, don't know uh, it's not a wood I've come across to be honest um, yeah I was trying to do well this is kind of strand by strand but I'm trying to do fairly large strands I mean this the hairstyle isn't fantastically stranded like that I know that suits better uh, long hair this is kind of more mixed up um, and I keep practicing it but I keep I, I do keep reverting to trying to do what I would do with um, airbrush which is that sort of stranding and because you were you know working in an airbrush you're working with transparent paints the stranding lets you sort of build up variations it kind of as, as you'll you know when you're doing uh, doing it with pyrography it kind of doesn't work that way <laughs> they just blend together they don't overlay each other as much as um, uh, they do when uh, when I'm airbrushing Ooh, I am maybe getting a visit from Felix are you staying are you going Felix or we may just kick everything off the desk okay that's not one I've come across um, uh, uh, brown coat captain but there again I'm not not fantastically you know, you know not spend a lot of time looking looking for it um, birch and poplar woods are the ones that I've seen most of trying to get um, light woods uh, it's fairly easy to get sort of darkish colored woods um, which I wish I haven't fantastically tried but uh, I shall have to have a look out and see. Uh, that's going to come down that way. Oh, okay, cross and then dip. Any any loud noises of crashing things are caused by the pussycat, who is leaping around. Uh, he just slipped off what he leapt, tried to leap onto, and so um, he'd probably be sat washing himself now, pretending that it was actually what he wanted to do. Yeah, you look cool. mm. I spend quite a bit of time sort of looking at the woods I can get for carving, for example. Um, you know, because obviously the different textures and our, and and our hardnesses give you different effects when you um, when you're carving, but. Uh, yeah, but uh, so, certainly so far, basswood is my favourite carving wood, just because it's um, it holds detail really nicely, uh, but it is relatively easy to carve. It's quite soft. Whereas um, something else like ash <laughs> is. Um, certainly holds details really nicely but is really hard so I am trying to actually trying to avoid doing lots of individual strands here but um, I'm sort of I'm really trying more to try and hint 
as much as I can at, um, at some things rather than actually spend a lot of time um, putting in the... That looks weird. Hmm. Okay. It looks weird, but I but um, there again, um, when I've done the rest of it, it might not look so weird. So I think one of the things I probably want to do here is to just start and, and put the hair around the outside of the face. So I know where the side of the f side of the fa where this side of the face is here. And that's probably just enough to do it for me. Uh, and then what I can do is apply an undercoat here. So just apply a level of colour. One of the one of the difficulties that I find is um, I want white wood, but as I start doing things like this, I, I the white wood throws off the colour perception or the shade perception. Everything looks too dark next to it until I start to shade it in. So I think what I'm going to do now is just um, apply a level of colour. If I get blobs, I'm not bothered here because it's mostly going to get covered up. But um, it's a chance to practice um, seeing if I can colour in one go. Just turn down the white. And of course, if I get darker areas like that, I am I'm creating a line. Um, I'm not bothered because uh, obviously hair has got lots of variations in it. But uh, creating lines like that is not good. I know better than that. Start, start at random locations so that you don't actually create an accidental line. Which is what I was doing. Of course, when you uh, work with a cooler pen, that's less likely to occur. It still does, but it's less likely to occur and you can fix it more easily. I saw you using um, some paper last night, um, Brown Coat Captain. I've never, I, I never have had much success in using sandpaper to erase. I usually find that the surface texture is disturbed, and if I put any pyrography over the top, it stands out too much as um, as a different surface texture for some reason. Are you, do you um, do you find it works okay? I'm getting blobs all over the place tonight. As I work down this side of the face, the hair is quite a bit lighter. Uh, well, it's it's not in shade, so it's not as dark, uh, and so. Uh, I just just want to have this this sort of. If I if I block most of this in like a colour, I can then just apply apply a little bit of sort of um, pretend texture over the top.
When I did the pussy cats, I spent quite a bit of time doing actual fur texture. Uh, not quite drawing every individual hair, but essentially drawing every individual hair. And uh, whilst that works and looks really good uh, on the cats, it did take several hours to do, which is one reason why I don't want to do it on, on a portrait of this size. I was working a lot, um, a lot smaller on the cats. Okay, let's give this a clean. <laughs> Anybody who's not seen this before, yes, this is kitchen paper, tissue paper. You can actually also, um, I know when you answered the question last night, um, County, you can do pyrography on card uh, and paper, although you tend to need thicker paper, but you can do it quite well on, um, on, on sort of fairly thick paper or cards. So it produces um, obviously a similar effect. It's almost anything with natural, you know, natural, uh, natural fibres basically, but um, you uh, you obviously have to work with a cooler pen on on paper because it takes the heat um, really quickly. But uh, you can do some really nice um, really nice work on it. Actually, maybe it's something I'll try again in the future. I haven't done that for a while. I mean, I, I did it when I was experimenting more than anything else. But. Um, I may actually have to have another go at doing that. Of course, I'm doing that wrong because I should be doing it in the um, direction of the hair. Ah, poof. Mm, cat hairs. Cat hairs. Like human hair. And it does not smell very nice when you heat it up uh, to a high temperature.
in theory it should not matter which way I do this in terms of the uh, the strokes if my fan good enough I should be able to create a completely even tone whether I do it that way that way upside down or left to right not that good so <laughs> by following uh, by following the line of the hair the you know the direction I want the hair to sort of uh, flow uh, what I can do then is um, any sort of marks, dark marks, tooly marks as I call them, that I create are in line with the hair, they'll probably get disguised or they'll add just to the texture so um, it does make it like that not really what I intended to happen um, Hello Felix! Let me just put the uh, pen to one side while Felix decides what he's doing um, he's just here at the moment. It's just off camera, and he's stood on the keyboard. So if the if it suddenly goes to a BRB or something like that, I, it's just the cat, and I'll uh, I'll switch it back. So that that foot that you can see at the top right, that's Felix, who is looking for somewhere to lay down. No, you can't. Go on, go on. You can't lay down there, Felix. The number of times it'd be quite nice for him to lay on the desk. He never does it when, well, he only ever wants to do it when there's a stream going on. Then he wants to sit right in the middle. Why is there an empty bag there? Sorry, I just saw an empty jewellery bag just back there. And I'm wondering where the thing that was in it, whatever it was, has gone. Hmm. Oh, well. the desk back. <laughs> that is... Is he going to settle behind the monitor? No, he's going to settle on top of the computer. I have a water cool computer and uh, uh, so the, the top fans uh, on the case usually don't turn on. Um, but there is sort of a warm draft comes up through through it because the, the uh, air through the radiators is blowing into the case and out. And um, so they, most of the cats, most of our cats like to, to lay on top of that vent. Keeps, it gives them a warm tummy. Now I am working with two reference pictures to the side of me. One is in uh, in monochrome, which helps me uh, judge the um, shading, and the other one is in colour. Because sometimes you don't actually want the... Well, no. Generally speaking, you do want the actual sort of grayscale representation. But sometimes... Um, the colour, when you look at colour, your eye sees it slightly differently to uh, to monochrome. And uh, despite the fact that you may pick the correct monochrome tone, lightness, darkness, um, it doesn't look right because your colour perceive your, your eye perceives certain colours as like different to others. A royal blue, for example, you'll see as being darker than a um, saturated red for example even though the red is perhaps uh, as a tone is actually darker so when when you sort of you're used to seeing uh, either color photographs or things like that sometimes 
if you do a straight monochrome, um, sometimes it doesn't look right and you have to sort of tweak it a little bit. So I, I now sort of work with two side by side so that I can um, I, I can sort of look at that and judge or try and judge um, where I want to uh, deviate from the true uh, from the true monochrome. And now then, this area here, actually, uh, yeah, talking to myself again, you see, shorthand. So. I've obviously picked up another cat hair there. thing if you can when you're doing things like this try not to work with low resolution images because when you blow them up you lose all detail um, and I'm looking at um, this uh, it isn't quite pixelated <laughs> but um, when you get lots of like fine hair together with low resolution it just becomes a fuzzy mess and you can't actually see where the hair direction is or strands or things like that the rest of the image you can sort of interpret when you but when you look at really fine details that are close together um, they just go all sorts of weird across a uh, well I won't say a problem here something that um, can often happen especially uh, uh, beginners will come across the problem uh, when they're trying to sort of bring two edges together so like here the edge of the the edge of the hair uh, and what you end up with is a, is a gap because you can't, it's really hard to start perfectly on the edge of something else. And you, you quite often see it with a lot of beginners that do it with airbrushing as well. And that is you get this little white gap between one bit and the next bit because they couldn't. And that's, you know, you've then got to sort of just go back and overwork it. Even I do it, but I just go back and overwork the area like I just did there. I've just closed that gap up just by overworking that uh, gap. I'm not bothered if it goes onto the face, it's hair. Um, and it's hair that's curling in, a, you know, the odd strand will go over onto your face, and so it doesn't matter. Ah, Claire, good evening. You finished two on stream today. Okay, you were streaming for a long time then. <laughs> um, you did the black ice and purple and the dark rose and black ice. Uh, okay, does the black, does the, um, I'm assuming the black rose looks okay, otherwise you wouldn't have continued doing it, but uh, ah, well done. So I reckon you would have been streaming probably a bracelet, mm, four hours to do that. 
didn't actually see. Mind you, I wasn't taking a great deal of notice during the day, to be honest. Um, I'm working really hard at the moment. Uh, and whilst I've got my phone next to me, which uh, chortles every time somebody starts streaming, um, that I follow, that is, uh, I don't, don't always look at it to see who it is. Now that's a bit of a cheat, because that's not really, is it? Four hours. There you go. <laughs> you look. You see, when you get the right, the right tools and the right equipment, it's real fun. Okay, so. I'm actually going to sort of cheat a little bit on this hairstyle. I'm going to simplify it down a little bit. Just because to try and get all the fancy stuff in will get quite hard. Uh, that's Felix. One of these days, if anybody knows why he's meowing, let me know. I think actually he just wants to be with somebody, but that somebody isn't me. <laughs> yep, they don't. Aluminium is not magnetic. It's you can induce. I'm just trying to think whether you can use it as a carbon electromagnet. Um, yeah, not magnetic. It's not ferromagnetic as they uh, describe it. So. I don't actually like magnetic tools. Because generally speaking, you usually find that they're... Uh, um, you don't want the magnet. <laughs> uh, and when you do, it doesn't work or something like that. Yeah. Well, Felix, you've had... You've, you've been said hi to. Yeah. He's now ignoring us. He's too interested in Lady Zara. Lady Zara is his favourite. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. Hmm. Not <laughs> Ah, uh, now, well, yes, sometimes when he's just leapt on the desk and you you see him sort of kick all paws out and sort of just scatter everything, and then he leaps off, and it's kind of like you you know he's done that on purpose. Or we'll just leap on the desk and go woof at something and, and then leap off. Because he knows he's done wrong then at that point, but he's, he's done it anyway. And usually when he's doing that, he wants something. But the, the general problem is you've got absolutely no idea what it is he wants. And though he doesn't want... F well, he might want food. But he doesn't need food. He's got food. He's got food to eat. There's food out. Um, so I, I kind of know it's not that, but... Yeah, sometimes it's attention. Other times, I don't know, it's... Um, it's just kind of, uh, it just seems to be, sit down so I can sit by you, and that's it. Little what's it? Yeah. I 
At the moment, ours seem to be going through, um, the other two boys seem to be going through a phase. Cats, quite often, you, you, they, I don't know, they can, they can step, th they can step through a, a shelf covered in glass ornaments and everything and then put the paws down really carefully and, um, and you sort of see them kind of tiptoeing through things and even when they're sort of fairly rapid they seem to be able to just get the paws um, but ours at the moment seem to be in a, a thing where they kind of don't care <laughs> they're just going to walk through it and they'll put the paws wherever they feel like and uh, and stuff goes all over the place your cat uh, he wants he wants other food yeah probably biscuits in this particular case probably um, your cat answers back when you tell him off. Ours don't. Junior says bless you. If you sneeze, Junior will squeak at you. Um, and uh, Felix does sometimes, when ladies ever talks to him, he does sometimes talk back. Uh, me, he, he's, his best thing is he, he will sort of sometimes just go a, you know, that. What on earth are you on about, look, and, and just ignores me completely. This um, this tool isn't uh, horrendously powerful in terms of energy. Um, around about, if it means anything, around about ten watts. That's um, less than you know, less than well, a sixth or a tenth of many domestic light bulbs. Um, but it is surprising just still how hot that actually is. I've got my fingers underneath this board. And I can feel the. I won't say it's uncomfortable, but it's you know if I, if I was there for any working in an area for any particular length of time, the back of the board would actually get uncomfortable. So it's it's kind of amazing just how much heat is involved and gets transferred uh, from the pen uh, into the wood. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I won't get down. Um, oh, I always make sure they do. Um, sometimes that involves pause going. It's, it's funny when you uh, I pick up a. So sometimes when you pick up a cat, how all four paws just go at right angles. You know, you put your hand underneath them, and, and instead of them just sort of lifting it with the paws dangling, they just come out. You know, just like you've done a star jump or something, and uh, the paws are out in, in all sorts of directions. And it, I find that quite funny. But um, uh, if you if you don't sort of lift them fairly quickly, that that sort of means everything gets pushed to one side. But uh, I do. I uh, generally speaking, we do make sure they get down. So if I sort of you know say get off the table, um, I do sort of make sure that they they do get off the table. Otherwise, it kind of like just reinforces well you're going to reinforce the fact that if you say something like that it, you mean it um, and they don't so I've just um, learned that you don't, you don't actually mean what you say that's looking is that looking Uh, more work. Oh, there's no point in getting angry at them. No point at all. Um, yeah, but yeah, they <laughs> do the cute act. I 
Um, what I'm trying to think. Yeah. I was going to say, I, w I was about to say, I, won I wonder if they sort of learn it from, because we we have three cats, um, whether they learn that sort of act from, from the other cats. And it just reminded me of um, an advert that I, s actually I saw it on YouTube. I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm fairly sure it was a, a, like a cat food product or something like that. But it was uh, kind of like an old cat talking to a kitten that's just moved in and, you know, the wisdom of ages. And um, uh, I'm not even going to try and describe the advert because I wouldn't do a really good job of it. But um, uh, it, it, uh, it sort of, if you could imagine cats speaking, it was kind of what you'd imagine they might say. If you click and point at the door, he'll do the same. <laughs> uh, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I was, I was thinking then, if you if you can click your fingers and point at the door, and the cat sort of does the same thing, that would be that would make him millions of pounds on YouTube. <laughs> but that's not what you meant. <laughs> Uh, dear. It'd be funny though, but it's not what you meant, yeah. Um. <laughs> I could, yeah. That that's that's kind of like a cartoon. That uh, that thought. Um, you know, the the humour sort of clicks her fingers and points at the door of the cat, and then the cat does it. Yeah. You know. The cat does it and the human walks out the door or something, you know. Well, as a little while ago we were mentioning um, bracelets and things, that's um, Moobot reminding everybody that um, I do have... Actually, I must change that, but anyway, we do have a, at least... Well, we've got a, a shop, an Etsy shop. Um, most of the pictures that you see appearing here, the jewellery pictures, are, there are, they are all items which have been made on stream. But they are also available uh, to buy if you, anybody's interested. If you uh, want to take a look, they are all on the um, zaragonart.etsy.com and uh, available to be purchased. They're all made to uh, to order. And the other items that you will see coming up there, scraper board and uh, punch craft, carving and pyrography. Again, they're all items which have been done on, on stream. So you can see we get through quite a, a varied um, set of crafts really from time to time. I've not been doing too many um, too many of some of them at the moment just because they are uh, relatively expensive um, scraper board or punch craft for example and uh, I need to save pennies at the moment why did I do something like that don't know It uh, shouldn't be at that size. I 
Um, the box change that I've done, um, Claire, in actual fact, even, he says, this one here. Uh, the small rings there are five, five thirty seconds, eighteen gauge, five thirty seconds, uh, and the big ones are what are they? Another nineteen gauge, um, three sixteens. So five thirty seconds and three sixteens, and as you can see, that's. Um, that's fluid. So, uh, wouldn't have thought so because you used a slightly larger, um, a larger, uh, larger rig than I've done. Um, so, it should be quite. Uh, um, like that. This is um, this is yellow and silver for those people looking. It's not. It's silver colour, shall I say? The clasp is sterling silver, but the. Um, the rings are anodized aluminium and it's silver color and uh, yellow and that's actually um, although you have to study it, it's actually a double helix the yellow and the silver spiral around each other eh, that way so it, it rotates that way around in this particular case um, Ninety-two. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's amazing just how many. Um, you know, it's it's like well in the UK where we have um, sort of fates and things like that. You quite often have a games uh, of chance, if you like, where there'll be a, a bottle full of something, uh, and it's guess how many. You know, guess how many pennies is in a bottle or gobstoppers or. Uh, jelly beans or something um, you could almost do the same thing with like at this bracelet it's kind of like guess how many rings uh, and as Claire's just said then you know there's um, in hers it's same design 180 rings yeah you wouldn't think there was 180 rings in that um, and it uh, so and yeah I can pick a different design and there may only be 50 in the design same size rings different design um, and again you know you can get over 300 in the same bracelet again using a different design so the same length rather than the same bracelet so I, it um, gets quite interesting sometimes uh, should look even all the way down um, if you if it's not looking even all the way down either you've got a ring out of place or sometimes they just need I mean one of the this um, one of the reasons for choosing this particular size is they're kind of slightly locked together because as you can um, and it I mean these these two the, the two side wings if you like sort of uh, just fit nicely I haven't tried it with with larger large rings um, because I kind of like the, the slightly uh, rectangular but um, no they should all should all look nice and regular if they don't it's kind of hard to get a ring out of place but um, just because of the way you weave them uh, some of the more complex designs it gets quite easy to get a ring out of place but this because you're folding them back on yourself it's sort of unless you've accidentally just put it through one of the rings rather than two But otherwise, um... sorry, this isn't pyrography. We're talking about jewelry. <laughs> uh, I I love making things like this um, with the with the rings um, and and the jewelry. So I, it's not too hard to get me talking about it. Um, in fact, I shall put it back in its bag. All the jewelry comes in a nice bag. Yeah, it shouldn't feel odd. Um, don't know. 
I mean, that 760 second is not fantastically. I'll tell you what the difference might be. Um, which which will stiffen it up a bit. If you've used 18 gauge for both, um, then that might be it. But um, the large rings here are 19 gauge. They're a bit thinner. But you, when you look at it, you can't actually tell that because of the way the, uh, the weave is. Um, I've never actually tried it with um, 18 gauge at that side, at that size. Uh, I'd probably tend to go for a square rather than a rectangle if I was using the same gauge, I think. Um, just, just from the point of view, I mean, the the part part of the reason for using the 19 gauge is there's just a little bit more room on the side here. Um, and they sort of sort of snap together a little bit, but um, don't know. Not tried it particularly. Yeah. Ah oh, no. Why would I tell you to shush? It gives me a chance to show off jewelry. Yeah, both eighty. Okay, that um, that might be some of it because the rings uh, the rings will be closer together uh, on on the side so it, there won't be quite as much movement in bending on the long on the on the long you know the long side so short side long side when you bend on the long side the the rings will probably uh, catch um quicker so you won't get as, as strong a bend radius Shouldn't, have made, shouldn't particularly make it feel stiff, right? except if you, you're doing a sort of more, you know. I suppose when you start to wrap it around your wrist, uh, at the sides here, where you've got a, a stronger, uh, um, uh, a narrow, what else, the smaller bend radius is the word I'm looking for, it might start to feel a little bit stiff there, um, I guess. Should be all right, though. But that's um, that's part of the experimentation sometimes, and uh, and, and just understanding, uh, Claire, um, you know how things. Sometimes you want that for you know that sort of slight rigidity for for various reasons. Um, yeah, I just want. To... Gotta be careful. I've started doing individual strands, which I did not want to do. For some reason tonight, I am just getting really fine lines. You didn't know what the G means. That's usually G A, I think. Um, gauge. Uh, thickness of the wire. Um, yeah, normally it's G A for gauge. Uh, G could be grams, <laughs> so be careful. 
but uh, normally well, sort of you quite often see the Y described as GA um, like 19 GA standing meaning gauge the problem is you've got a number of different gauges SWG standard wire gauge which is a UK measurement you get uh, AWG American wire gauge which is even though it may have the same number if it's a number it's a different size um, and uh, I forgot there's another one uh, a third wire gauge which is often used so you you kind of have to be a little bit careful using that um, I tend to uh, as much if I'm if I'm looking at different ones I'll tend to look at the millimeters or, or like this 0.04 inch but one millimeter that's the thickness of the the diameter of the wire and then here five millimeter is the internal diameter of the ring and again that's something you have to watch internal diameter or external diameter um, different places sometimes list them uh, chainmail rings are usually measured internal diameter because that's a key, that's the key number or one of the key numbers but for some reason sterling silver rings are measured as outside diameter don't know why but 18 gauge yeah these are 18 gauge and when you actually look at them individually like this I can look at these and go they actually look quite a bit thicker than not uh, 1.2 millimeters as opposed to one millimeter that's the difference between the two gauges um, but the um, uh, um, so this is kind of a mix and match because these are these are uh, 530 seconds which I think um, is one of the ones that you've got these are 316 so 630 seconds so yours is a 30 second of an inch just slightly bigger than that um, and 0.2 of a millimetre slightly thicker and it's kind of so tiny numbers but they make an enormous amount of difference and so not specifically on the box chains that you're doing now but there are uh, candy cane for example um, is really well you can do it with this um, this this gauge 18 gauge but it's really hard 19 gauge 0.2 of a millimeter slightly slimmer uh, yeah 0.2 of a millimeter slightly slimmer and um, it's easy you, yeah, I mean you, 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 you well if you look at a ruler a millimeter is really tiny and 0.2 of a millimeter is even tinier and yet it makes an enormous difference um, in fact just as an example I think I've, have I got it here um, I've got a I've got a small test piece somewhere on my desk. He says looking for it. Um, I actually haven't. I don't think I've got the two test pieces side by side. But um, yeah, that's a strong magnet. Um, This isn't the test piece I'm looking for. <laughs> no, that sounds like a Star Wars film. That is not the test piece you are looking for. Um, yeah, you might not see this, but these are the same diameter rings. This one is 0.1 millimeter thinner, uh, and you might not see it particularly well. But this looks a lot looser than that, and it is. And that's that's kind of the difference 0.1 millimeter makes, and they're the same sized rings uh, for both pieces. Uh, this one is a lot more sort of um, solid, not uh, you know holds its form a lot better, just with something like that. But I'm just looking to see if I can find the other one that I was looking for, which. Um, No, nope, that's not it. Um, I've um, it, it, it's it, it it is one like this, but I can't actually see it on my desk at the moment. Uh, and again, it's it's um, using this as an example. 
uh, I, but I think I've used slightly, a slightly smaller diameter to me. This, as you can see, is sort of fluid. It's not, it's not bad. You know, it will bend quite a bit. Um, using 0.1 millimeter thicker rings, 0.1 millimeter thicker rings, that's rock solid to the point where I cannot actually make it any longer because I just can't get the rings through the gaps. 0.1 millimeter difference. Okay, if you've got a quarter inch ring, 0.1 millimeter doesn't make as much of a difference. Uh, but down at this side, size, it makes an enormous amount of difference. Uh, but I can't actually find that one. I quite often do lots of little tiny just pieces just to experiment with things like colours, sizes. I mean I love this size. Um, I love work I love working tiny uh, and delicate like this, but um, that would to do a bracelet uh, would probably take in, in this size 300 rings uh, um, and this would normally take about 50. Uh, sorry, this size, it, it's about 50, 60 rings, probably close to 300 uh, at this size, um, and probably about two to three hours just to make a bracelet. Not a necklace, but a bracelet, just because of the tiny size. And then when you, you do something like use um, titanium, this is titanium, um, and then you have, um, when you're working with titanium, it be, it's harder to bend. <laughs> <laughs> so the the time extends just because you're using titanium but um, uh, of a similar size but um, I do like titanium they're a lovely sort of pastely sort of colour as opposed to shiny so just a nice contrast uh, you need boxes like that actually I probably well um, Hobbycraft for those boxes. I actually don't find them that useful. I thought I would do, but I don't. There's about two hundred rings in a box in a in a square. Um, I can go through two hundred rings fairly quickly. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a bracelet, um, so you you empty you empty one of these fairly quickly. So it's it's a nice showpiece. Um, I do keep stuff in it, but I actually use larger boxes uh, most of the time. So th this is great for for choosing colours and um, and sort of doing small test lengths and things like that. But um, if you make a lot, this is this isn't really good for doing that. But as I say, you can get them from Hobbycraft. Get rid of the cat. I don't know where the cat hairs come from. Well, obviously they were stuck to the bottom of that box, but... Um, <laughs> I don't want them on there. Right, one of the things I want to do here is turn the pen down and switch pens because I just want to extend that earring a little bit. It, um, it should be down there. So what I'm going to do... I'm kind of actually just creating dots here, um, allowing them to join up uh, and just create um, texture because it kind of looks like a, um, well, like the earring does, which is sort of 
uh, it, it's actually a yellow color goldy sort of color um, with lots of dimples in it around the outside so this kind of resembles it quite nicely but uh, just to create the texture I am literally just dotting around joining up some of the dots making sure I don't leave you know really wide open spaces uh, yeah except um, you might want to invest in some Ziploc bags some small Ziploc bags um, just because they I know those packs are sort of just sticky and they um, they do tend to come open a little bit indeed so I, that's why I was just um, I was just going to finish this earring and then um, that would be it for this evening but uh, thank you for uh, for the reminder Let's extend that a little bit out. Like that. Hmm. Okay, I'll just fill in that corner, and then switch pens again. One of the nice things about having um, a control that's got two sockets on it's just a switch, and I can leave them permanently connected. Not that it's that difficult to just unplug and plug another pen in. Um, I occasionally hold both in one, in, you know, one in each hand, and I don't deal with things left-handed, but it's just easy to switch over. Um, so. and of course I need to turn this pen up it's got a, uh, a bigger tip than the other one um, and therefore it needs more heat uh, more current and which is what the machine controls uh, to actually get it to heat up I'll do that and um, actually What I'm going to do is cheat a little bit. Intellectually, you expect that to be a little bit darker. Uh, yeah, to get the shading right. Shading on the hair. So even though I've got texture in, I can apply shading over the top of that texture. Depending on just how I do it, uh, and how much I do it, you uh, you can keep the texture there. Uh, that's been created, so I'm just kind of colouring in the area around the texture, so the texture's lines. Effectively, if I apply a, an even coat of pyrography over that, of pyrography everything gets darker so the the lines get a little bit darker and the lighter wood that's between the lines gets a little bit darker and um, you you keep your texture that way but if you apply sufficient heat and I'm starting to do that here the um, it's not um, it's not an even darkness so the lighter the light wood will take colour quicker than wood that's had some colour applied to it. 
um, so they, they don't actually sort of come down together they actually get closer together as you you come down so you get to a point where the two colors actually are just the same um, so you, uh, you you do lose texture after a, um, as, as you darken things down but um, Yeah, it's still too light, is this? Way too light. It looks better in person than it, than it does on screen. On screen it looks way too light. I need to do some more work on that. Um, but it won't be tonight. It um, will hopefully be tomorrow night. So I'm going to turn I'm going to turn that off because I have a habit of forgetting. Hmm. Um, but that's coming along quite nicely. It is. It's now just putting you know various hair textures in around here, and then I've got to do the same on the other side. But uh, mm, yeah, I'm just I was just trying to work out uh, in my own mind roughly how much uh, time there is left. Um, not left. How much more work time-wise this needs? But it kind of it it has what it has. Um, and stopping talking whilst I'm doing it doesn't help <laughs> but uh, thank you very much for that Claire so I am going to remind anybody that's watching I don't know if there is anybody watching apart from you Claire but um, I am going to remind people about my website zeroganart.com which um, has some of the like the paragraph piece the punch graph piece a little bit more of description about them and the some of the uh, scraper bolt stuff there is a shop there, but it's only got a couple of items in at the moment. It's not um, fully populated. If you'd like to look at what is for sale, uh, I recommend you take a look at my Etsy store there, zoganart.exe.com. But uh, apart from that, Twitch wise, a, you would like to, I would very much encourage you to follow me. You get to see the finish of this and what's coming up after this is done is some carving. I did promise I'd do carving for the next one. Um, so there's some carving coming up. I'm not sure what it's going to be but for some reason an owl is um, coming to mind. So it might be an owl. If you would like um, potentially better notifications than Twitch often gives out, you can follow me on Twitter. It's at Zaraganat and that uh, a tweet goes out when I go live each uh, each night and a, an odd tweet for other things like if I'm going to be late or I put something new in the shop something like that. But not, a, not uh, thousands of tweets a day so you're quite safe if you follow me. On the other hand, if you would just like to catch me on the next stream, which hopefully should be tomorrow, it will be from about 8pm UK time, 20 hundred hours UTC or GMT, they're both the same, or two hours ten minutes ago, in whatever time zone you're in. <laughs> and I got it right this time in Declare, uh, right first time. And Moobot very kindly just pops up the, uh, the links for anybody that's watching as well. Check them out. Uh, I think they're good, but I would do their mine. So I'll take that with um, however you want to take it, really. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a great night. Uh, I'll wish you uh, a wonderful evening here from West Yorkshire in the UK. And I'll hope to see you in the studio again in the future. Bye for now.